We have, uh, as a result of legislation in our last session, we were required to create a statewide data coordinator position. I think that's a, a really good evidence of, of exactly what you're talking about. We've got uh, the gentleman hired September 1st, um, started with absolutely nothing but a whiteboard, and uh, we have uh, a number of different initiatives that he has completed, uh, one of which in particular is benefiting citizens because we've got our Alcoholic Beverage Commission and our Department of Public Safety that each do things with different sort of retail adult beverage organizations, and they have disparate data sets, and, and our statewide data coordinator was able to get those two organizations together, share some data in a meaningful way so that the uh, Alcohol Beverage Commission, uh, their field agents could actually focus on certain establishments that had a higher incidence of Department of Public Safety call-outs. <laughs> Thinking that if somebody has that type of an operation, they're more inclined to have ABC sort of violations. And uh, so it really helps them focus in on, you know, leverage their resources really efficiently. Um, and it's a great example of how previously without a, a position like a statewide data coordinator, very difficult to, to really get disparate data sets together and sort of push forward that initiative of, hey, I've got this valuable data set, you've got that valuable data set. If we can put it together, the synergies are far greater from an efficiency perspective. So I'm really pleased with, with that legislation and the fact that uh, we've been able to staff up that position and start to make those kind of benefits for, for citizens and, and generate government efficiencies. We have um, part of our consolidated data center program has a requirement for our vendors in that program, to, uh, which is a completely managed program. Um, we have a requirement for two things that I think are, are uh, you know, really relevant. One is a refresh program. Uh, one of the things that traditionally plagues many state organizations is this view that when you have a dollar to spend and you have a system that's operating but it's 10 years old, but it's not broken, do you put the dollar into a new server? because it's well past its shelf life, or do you put that dollar into the core mission? And, and 99 out of 100 times, that dollar is going to go to the core mission. So in this program area, we actually uh, created a contract requirement to refresh the technology every five years. So every year, our vendors are refreshing 20%, and so we will never, for those, those uh, organizations that participate in that program, they will never go back to you know, incurring uh, technical debt or legacy, you know, legacy debt. Um, their, their hardware infrastructure is going to remain current with new technology. Um, and then on top of that, we have a software currency requirement of N minus two. And so again, that does the same thing. It accomplishes ensuring that the, the organizations that are in that program cannot go to a legacy state with their applications. That of course generates a, a bunch of cyber risk and, and other areas of concern, uh, as well as uh, you know, not enabling their mission. So really in that program, I think those two, two are components are really key, uh, key parts of, 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 you know, of that. Um, definitely workforce is a, is a big issue for everybody, you know, they, they talk about the silver tsunami and the fact that uh, we've got knowledge workers that are close to retiring and, and, uh, and in fact are retiring at, at you know, increasing rates. Um, and, and juxtapose that with certain functional areas that are new but of high demand, so for example cybersecurity professionals. Um, so we have two fronts from a talent acquisition process that we're fighting. Uh, one is cybersecurity professionals, new, new professionals coming out of schools, coming out of higher education. Um, it's, it's a negative unemployment rate, which means there are more jobs than cybersecurity professionals. That's a huge area of concern for us. So we've got a cybersecurity position that's focused on trying to work with um, K through 12 and higher education to actually build curriculums to actually produce uh, a higher uh, volume of trained cybersecurity professionals. We do things like the Patriot uh, program uh, at the federal level, national level, where uh, they seek out kids in, in uh, middle school and high school and they do cyber, uh, com cyber competition uh, exercises. And then they go through state competitions and regional competitions and work up to a federal competition. Locally we're doing the same thing within Texas. So we're really trying hard to, to promote, um, take a long-term view on, on addressing the problem um, and, and work with people through the educational process to try and produce more of the type of skills that we're going to need in the future to ensure that you know, from a cyber perspective, you know, we've got, uh, we've got adequate capabilities uh, and then uh, staff and, and awareness um, in producing not just, you know, digital natives, but cyberly secured, prepared digital natives. Um, and, and I think the other thing is the, the aging workforce. So the, the fact that we lose knowledge workers, um, you know, due to retirement things is a challenge. And so we are working a variety of different things on that front to make working in the public sector more attractive to recent uh, college graduates, um, things like moving to a more open office environment, um, trying to, to focus on collaboration, building a collaboration room, um, 
trying to encourage uh, uh, you know, telework, for example, and trying to adopt some of the things that private sector has shown are very, very progressive and very you know, effective uh, at making the workplace a vibrant workplace and of interest to a younger workforce. Um, and so when we lose a knowledge worker and somebody to retirement, um, it's a challenge, we're, coupled with trying to make the, the employee culture more attractive. We're also looking at um, a strategy of bringing in uh, not uh, similarly qualified people. If you lose a 30-year-old knowledge worker, there is a bunch of intuitive knowledge that that person has in that one head, it, it, a lot of value that they can bring to bear in their office environment. When you look at replacing that, do you replace a like skill? And, and our strategy now is to not try and replace a like skill, but look for maybe two or three more entry-level workers that in total might be able to deliver that same amount of productivity um, and give them a training path to train them up to um, you know, being, being stronger knowledge workers individually. Um, but we think that long-term strategy will help us sort of defeat that, that retirement tsunami. Um, but then also, again, make the, the employee culture one that's more vibrant and more interesting to uh, entry-level workers. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we've done is really focused on an open data portal. Texas has long, uh, as a result of our, our uh, previous comptroller, has long had a, a strong position on transparency. And, and the form of transparency that we've provided historically has been sort of posting a static data set out on a, on a website or, you know, sort of a PDF or a spreadsheet or something that really was what you could look at but you really couldn't manage or interpret on your own and so we've, we've opened up a, a data portal it's uh, data.texas.gov and we've worked with a number of agencies to actually post data sets out there one of which uh, is our, our capital metro for example locally we have local uh, organizations that's with the city of Austin and they participate as well so they actually put bus movement data into this open data portal and they're refreshing it about every 30 seconds so it's a very active, very dynamic solution. Um, and, and so it's, it's there for all citizens to go out. We've got parks and wildlife data out there. We've got you know, our own DIRs, cooperative contracts data out there. So we're posting as many uh, data sets out there to uh, see what citizens are interested in, how they can actually participate in understanding what their government is doing. Um, and we, th we think that's really um, something that we're gonna strong continue to strongly pursue. Yeah, um, I think for us, it's, I'll give you a theme, it's, it's really my government, my way, and, and we're working in this direction. Um, and, and the idea is traditionally, if you look at a state agency, they look at their mission. They, they understand that they are delivering value to, to their constituents in a very defined and prescriptive fashion. And, it, it, and their, their view is contained to how they deliver those services to citizens. Um, our challenge, and we're working with agencies, to try and shift that perspective and say, instead look at it as how the citizen has to consume it. Um, and so we've got a younger, you know, younger citizens in Texas, we've got uh, older citizens in Texas, they all have different ways that they want to go about it. You know, most people today, uh, many people, let me not say most, but, but many people, are really focused on you know, the use of a smartphone or a tablet. And they want to do their business at 2 o'clock in the morning, not at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in a, in a line in a you know, bricks and mortar building. So um, we're, we're really trying to work hard through a combination of our open data portal uh, and our statewide data coordinator to get our agencies to pull their data sets together, come up with single versions of truth, not have duplicate data, um, and, and come up with an easy way to, to portalize the delivery of services to citizens. So um, a citizen can log in to the extent that they choose to, to find their portal, and then not have to know that, well, if they're, if they're you know, retired and, and uh, a, school a retired school teacher and you know receiving some you know, Medicaid benefits or food benefits or they have a, a boat trailer a car and a fishing license you know in in that circumstance they have to know that they have to work with 10 or 12 agencies and they have to know which agency delivers which of those services in this sort of portal environment we want to be able to sh shift that so that we share our data amongst the agencies and bring that data to the citizen in the context that the citizen prescribes so that now the, the portal, again, should a citizen choose to do this, would provide a reminder that your, your fishing license is coming up for renewal next month, your driver's license is up for renewal in, in you know, 60 days, but you won't be able to renew it online because you have to go get a new photo and you know, that type of stuff. So bring the services to the citizen in the fashion that the citizen wants to really do it. So for us, I think that, that mission is something that, that really would distinguish us from other public sector organizations. Uh, well, let, let's say that not since taking the, the role, but since I, I started working with DIR and in the public sector, um, I never envisioned that, uh, that I would be a public servant or, 
work in you know public administration. Um, you know, I, but I've found that since I've been uh, been with the agency and, and you know in this capacity um, for about the last eight years, I have found that that I actually um, look forward to coming to work. I, uh, I, I love my work, um, you know, the, the value that we add for our organizations and, and by extension the value that they add to citizens uh, is extraordinarily redeeming. Um, I get teased in the office a lot, um, you know, it's not, I say it's not work, you know, if it's fun. Uh, and I get teased in the office, we have a sort of banner cry, thank God it's Monday, you know, um, so we all look forward to going to work. And uh, so I, I've never quite had that same fully redeeming experience in the private sector. Um, so it's, it's extremely rewarding uh, and the opportunity to, to serve the citizens of Texas is, uh, is you know, an inspiring one and I'm grateful to, to have the opportunity to do that.